Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge, and this is the start of a new series of study with me videos, which is very exciting. Um, and in these videos, I'm gonna be documenting my process and the long-term journey of preparing for one of my postgraduate medical exams. Now, I'm a doctor now, but for the last six years, I've been at Cambridge University Medical School, you know, taking exams multiple times a year. And before then, A-levels, before then GCSEs, before then, you know, trying to smash those, you know, year seven, end of year exams. and sats and stuff before then and like over this last like 15 year period i think i've personally gotten pretty good at doing exams in a fun and efficient manner because a i quite enjoy studying i think i've got a process that makes it fun and b i've got a process that makes it you know as efficient as possible in terms of you know results versus the amount of time you put in because you know i like to do other things with my time like making videos like this one so in this new series of videos i'm going to be documenting the process of preparing for the mrcog which stands for the membership of the royal college of obstetricians and gynecologists now obstetric and gynecology or OBS and gyne or ONG for short uh, is the specialty that I want to go into and with every medical and surgical specialty you have to take loads of exams along the way exams don't just end when you finish medical school these exams are really quite hard they're like medical school finals but taken up a notch you've got to learn a lot more niche stuff but you also have to know a lot of the basics that you would have covered in like the first and second year of medical school so enough of that in this video I'm going to be giving you a brief overview kind of a broad brushstroke overview of how I intend to prepare for this exam the MR COG. And then later on in the video, I'm going to share the tools that I'm currently using to prepare for this exam. So hopefully, uh, whatever stage of education you're at, whether you're at school, college, university or beyond, hopefully you'll find something interesting to gain from these videos where I'll document my process of studying and share the tips and tricks that I've picked up as we go along. Okay, so let's start with the two most important fundamental principles of effective studying, and I have made long videos about these. They are, of course, active recall number one and spaced repetition number two. And if you haven't seen my videos detailing the evidence behind these, please watch those. You know, people have commented saying that those videos alone have changed their life and they have transformed their exam results. And if you haven't seen them, you really need to watch them. Like genuinely, they're really, really good videos. Please watch my videos about active recall and spaced repetition. Just to quickly summarize, active recall is the idea that the more you test yourself on a subject, the better you will retain the knowledge and the understanding of that subject. Testing yourself is not just for the exam. It's also a process that you need to do throughout the whole the whole like studying process. So principle number one is gonna be active recall. That is gonna take center stage in my entire study strategy for this exam. Principle number two is spaced repetition. The more you space your repetition of stuff out over time, the more likely it is to stick in your long-term memory. I don't believe in cramming. Cramming is a complete myth, especially that I've got like a year plus to prepare for, the, for this exam. And it's not really just about preparing for the exam. I also want to be become like a good doctor and know my specialty, know my subject and be the kind of person that, you know, you ask a question to and, you know, I'd hopefully be able to give a reasoned answer, quoting evidence if I have to, that sort of thing. And space repetition is also going to play a massive part in my study technique, strategy, whatever you want to call it. Um, so active recall, space repetitions, those are gonna be the two fundamental pillars that everything else is gonna rest on. All right, broad overview. Um, the strategy is gonna be split up into three phases. And these phases are designed because there is a, such a huge amount of content to cover and you can pretty much go into unlimited detail on every topic, like, you know, every disease could probably have its own textbook written about it, but I'm not gonna memorize textbooks for every single of the hundred diseases that you get in Obs and Gynae, because that's just a complete waste of time and completely unsustainable and yeah. Um, so three phases of the plan. Phase number one is gonna be to scope the subject. And I think this is the most important thing in any kind of strategy for preparing for any kind of exam. Scope the subject, work out what the broad chapters are and within those chapters, what the subtopics are. And then, you know, part of phase one is gonna be a free active recall, an active recall, where I'm pretty much gonna be trying to work out what I know about these topics already. So I studied OBS and in medical school, like everyone does, so I will have some baseline level of knowledge about a lot of these topics. So the plan in phase one is gonna be to get on paper, or rather on my iPad Pro, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, and you can watch a video up there, um, to get, you know, on, you know, some sort of writing device what the, the content plan is for the whole subject and then write down pretty much everything I know about it already, everything I understand, so that I have an idea of where the holes in my knowledge are and where the biggest holes in my knowledge are so I can fill those holes first. Phase two of the plan is gonna to be to fill those holes but using a very big paintbrush, like broad brush stroke overview. I'm not gonna care about the specific niche little details, which is very tempting to go down the line of because, you know, once you start learning about polycystic ovarian syndrome, you can just, you know, find a textbook about, uh, you know, reproductive endocrine physiology and like really go deep into the evidence and into the details. I'm not gonna be worrying about the niche stuff. I'm gonna focus on 
filling in the holes, painting them in with a massive huge paintbrush, such that by the end of phase two, I'll pretty much know all the content from a very, very basic point of view, and then be able to dig down deeper. And I'm hoping that by the end of phase two, um, you know, as I do practice papers and stuff like that, I'll start to get towards the point where I could feasibly pass the exam quite comfortably. That's kind of the aim of phase two. Then in phase three, that's gonna be when I kind of drill down into the detail in the stuff that's interesting, the stuff I care about, you know, pretty much whatever I feel like learning more about, I'll learn more about. Because again, as I said, it's pretty much unlimited. And this is gonna be the case for a lot of your subjects, especially if you're at university, especially if you're studying medicine. There is literally an infinite amount of stuff you could learn about everything. And kind of phase three of this method is gonna be that, okay, once I'm pretty confident that I could pass the exam if I took it, now I'm gonna be trying to score those final few marks, the marks that are hopefully get me into, you know, the high mark bracket range, whatever you wanna call it. And kind of looking at papers, looking at recent evidence, looking at new research, that sort of stuff. That's gonna be phase three. That's gonna come many, many, many months further down the line because at the start, all I care about is filling in the holes with a big ass paintbrush. So that's a general broad overview. Number one, scope the subject and work out what I know already, work out my starting point. Number two, fill the holes with broad brush strokes. And then number three, drill deep into the details only after I've done all of the above. Okay, now onto the fun stuff. And I'm gonna be talking about the tools of the trade, the tools that I'm gonna be using to build my study empire over the next year or so. And to start with, my flashcard app of choice is gonna be Quizlet, who are the presenting sponsor for this video. So thank you very much to Quizlet for agreeing to work with me. This is pretty cool, being sponsored by Quizlet. Anyway, I'd considered using Quizlet for quite a while now. I kind of dabbled with it a little bit in medical school for anatomy and pharmacology, but mostly ended up using Anki in medical school just because it's what I knew and it was fairly easy. But then on quite a few of my Study With Me videos, I got comments from students saying, why don't I try Quizlet? Because it's got a nicer design and they build this whole gamification thing into it kind of from day one, which makes revising a much more pleasant and fun inducing experience. I kind of found with Anki, it was becoming a real chore to get through all my flashcard decks to the point where I kind of stopped using Anki and switched to my Google Sheets method, uh, which lots of you have asked about and which I'll be doing uh, more videos on to address in a little bit more detail. So yeah, I looked into Quizlet, it seems pretty cool. I've been using it for the last few weeks. So far, I really like it. I like the ease of use, I like the design, I like the gamification. And even, you know, because I'm a big nerd, I started reading some of their posts on their engineering blog where their data scientists have written, you know, statistical analyses of how they build their spaced repetition algorithm and how they ensure active recall works. And I'm a real sucker for all that stuff. So I think they've got a really cool team behind them that's actually doing interesting stuff, that's trying to push the envelope as far as this effective studying thing goes with spaced repetition and active recall, which are, of course, the two fundamentals of effective studying. So yeah, Quizlet is gonna be my flashcard app of choice. Um, to pretty much try and learn all of the facts that I need to know. I'm not a fan of using flashcards for general broad concepts. I think, you know, trying to understand concepts and using the Feynman technique, more on that a bit later about kind of being able to explain it to a five-year-old is much more important for understanding stuff. But as is the case for a lot of exams, and especially the case for niche, very niche postgraduate medical exams, there are an absolute ton of facts that you just have to learn. And an app like Quizlet is really gonna help me do that, I hope. Secondly, I'm gonna be using the trusted Google Sheets uh, for two main purposes. Firstly, it's gonna be a tracking tool for my, space, for my spaced repetition. I'm not really gonna make a revision timetable. Instead, it's gonna be a retrospective revision timetable, meaning that I'm not gonna say that, you know, next week I'm studying this topic, the week after I'm studying this topic. Instead, I'm gonna log what I happen to have studied once I do it and once I active recall it. And again, there's more information in my Study With Me videos, but I'll be doing a more detailed video talking about how I build this retrospective revision timetable using Google Sheets. So that's point number one for Google Sheets. And point number two is that I'm gonna be using Google Sheets a little bit for active recall as well. Like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of using flashcards for broad brushstroke concepts, but I do like putting kind of broad general concepts within my Google Sheet so that if I'm looking at kind of mechanism of labor as like a topic in obstetrics, for example, I can immediately see what the broad topics are. And then at a glance, I can look at my color coding to see how well I know the topics or if I'm considering testing myself, because active recall is gonna be a theme all the way through, as we've said a hundred times already. If I'm considering testing myself, then I can at a glance see that, oh, okay, so within this chapter, we've got the topic of the mechanism of labor, and then, okay, I don't know that very well. What do I know about this topic? And then I can cue my active free recall where I just think or explain to my friend or my housemate or write it down, whatever, whatever I know about that topic. So Google Sheets, firstly, number one, as a retrospective revision timetable, and secondly, as a method for active recall. But again, more videos coming on those a little bit later. Thirdly, of course, I'm gonna be using my trusty iPad Pro with uh, Apple Pencil uh, as my primary note-taking method, my note-taking device. 
I'll be honest, I'm not really a fan of taking notes as a form of revision. I'm not really a fan of summarizing. However, it is useful to have like, you know, a single source of truth for a lot of things that existing summaries are not readily available. So I've made a video that's currently on like 1.3 million views, like by far the most popular video on this channel about how I take notes on my iPad in medical school. So you can watch that if you like. That talks a lot more about how I use the iPad Pro and notability to take notes. But you know, this is gonna, this is, I, I love this. I use it at work every single day for my to-do list. It goes with me everywhere. This is gonna be the ultimate revision companion along with Quizlet and Google Sheets. In fact, Quizlet has an app, Google Sheets has an app. It's gonna be on the iPad. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna play a big part in my, in my study method and I'll be sharing that as I go along. Fourthly, I'm gonna be looking for sources of questions, you know, exam questions, past paper cases, that sort of stuff. There's a few different online question banks for the MRCOG. There's a few official ones, a few unofficial ones. I'll be subscribing to all of those and doing as many questions as I can. And I'll be getting my hands on books from libraries and from the internet and stuff that have medical cases in them, you know, where they give you a description of a patient and ask what you do next and kind of talk you through the case. So that's gonna be a big part of my active recall strategy. And I'm gonna be doing that pretty much from day one because there's no real point in preparing for an exam if you don't know what's gonna come up in the exam. You might as well just like, you know, do the exam papers as you go along to see, track your progress. At the start, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be getting very good marks, but I'm hoping that as time goes on, my marks will steadily improve as I acquire more knowledge and understanding of the specialty, which is quite exciting. And finally, I'm gonna be using some textbooks. Yes, I know. I've talked a bit in previous videos about how I really don't like textbooks for medical school exams. And the reason I don't like them for medical school exams is that I think they're far too detailed and you don't really need that detail to do really well in a medical school exam. Medical school exams are more about, you know, just getting a very broad understanding of everything rather than a deep specific understanding of some things. Whereas now we're at the postgraduate level where a lot of the information is unfortunately tied up in textbooks or tied up within like research papers that are hard to access on the internet. So I'm gonna be having to use textbooks, especially in phase three of the plan where I'm gonna be digging deeper into each of these topics you know, just using Wikipedia is no longer gonna cut it, even though it used to for medical school. So yeah, textbooks are unfortunately, <laughs> but you know, excitingly gonna pay, play some part in my study technique uh, over the coming year. So let's wrap up. That was the method, um, broad overview, the three phases, and we talked about the five different tools of the trade that I'm gonna be using to build this study empire over the coming year. This is gonna be quite exciting. Um, preparing for this, for this exam is quite a tricky endeavor. It's supposed to be quite a hard exam. The pass rate is quite low, so I'm hoping that you know I will be amongst the people that pass it. And I kinda wanna do really well, A, in the exam, but B, also because it's not just about doing well in the exam anymore. This is about being a good doctor and knowing my specialty. And I wanna be the kind of doctor that knows their specialty well. I don't wanna be a waste man doctor. So there's a lot riding on this. It's gonna be fun. I'm working full time as a doctor and part time as a YouTuber alongside. So it's really gonna be a test of how efficiently can I study? You know, how can I get the, the best bang for my buck in terms of acquiring knowledge and understanding in return for the, the smallest amount of time invested as possible. So it's gonna be fun and I'm hoping to bring you guys along for the journey. If you'd like to follow along, it would be really cool. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you picked up some interesting things that you can uh, learn along the way. And stay tuned for next week where there's gonna be the first like legit study with me video. I've got a day off work like next Friday. So I'm gonna be spending that whole day studying, scoping out my subject and we'll invite some friends over for dinner at the end. You know, the usual study with me style, a throwback to the, you know, the, the good old university days. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thanks again to Quizlet for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.